So what I often will tell people is, is blend your feelings with facts. Because the other thing is, is cancer is very personal. Mm -hmm. We are afraid of it, or we don't want it, or we're worried about our loved ones. Welcome to the Anti-Cancer Toolkit Series, where we discuss everything from healthy habit building to nutritional sciences to health literacy, all to equip you with actionable knowledge on cancer prevention through nutrition. That brings us to our guest here today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi there, thank you. Yeah, uh, my name is Dr. Cameron Norman. I am a adjunct professor in the Dallas School of Public Health. Now back to that idea of blending facts and feelings together. What makes online communication about cancer unique and how should we as viewers approach it? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of information written on cancer. So that's the one thing. It's a good thing, it's also a problem. The other problem with cancer is that there's a lot of different types of cancer out there. They have different causes, different consequences, and the data is a little all over the place. And part of the problem is, is that some of it isn't, isn't that accessible to the average person. So sometimes we rely on things like stories, uh, personal narratives, or people's interpretations of the evidence. Some of that can be very good. Some of it can also be quite problematic. So moving over to yeah. the health literacy field, mm -hmm. um, you've done a lot of work there. You have the um, e-health literacy model that you've co-created. So could you talk a little bit about that and then also maybe define what health literacy even is? Really what the model is, is just a way to help you self-assess uh, some fundamental skills on what it might take to use information on the internet or internet and, and it could be anything, social media. So is, do you, do you know how to appraise information? Do you know how to find it? The model has traditional literacy as the foundation with health literacy and science literacy, our ability to navigate the health system and our knowledge of how research is done, respectively as further anchors. Computer, media, and information literacy, which encompass being able to keep up with and use these technologies and discern what's real and what's not in media, serve as pedals that round off one's e-health literacy. And then kind of using that model as a backdrop, um, how do we go about maybe helping loved ones who could have fallen victim to misinformation, especially for health-related misinformation? One, one thing to, to worry about is, or to think about, is that nobody likes to be told they've fall, been fallen for something. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to look foolish. So one of the things that I often do is just demonstrate how uh, social media can be deceptive. And, and not necessarily with intent, sometimes with intent, but just to show examples. And then use that as a, as a point of discussion for people to say, you know, has this happened to you? 